I recently purchased the Sony 600mm f4 and I have to say it is by far the best lens I've ever had the pleasure of using. The amount of detail that it captures is simply jaw-dropping, but don't take my word for it. Let me show you. Come on, let's go. Sometimes this happens. But let's come back to this a little later, because right now there are a couple of cooperative brown pelicans waiting for an early morning photo shoot, and there they are now looking as beautiful as ever in that nice early morning light. Let's see what kind of detail the Sony 600 f4 and the a7r4 can squeeze out of these beauties. They always say to focus on the eye, and this beautiful early morning light surely sets it off nicely. And who could ignore those amazing feathers on this bird's head and all of those cracks and crevices in its face. But check this out. You can see tiny little water droplets clinging to the feathers on this bird's chest. And this angle might reveal something you've never noticed about brown pelicans. Look at the end of the bird's beak. That piece at the end almost looks like a big sharp witch's fingernail. And isn't it amazing how the fingernail just perfectly wraps around the bottom portion of the beak? Yeah, that's amazing. But let's check out a different pelican who has decided to brave the massive surf that is beating up the coastline this morning. I really love being able to capture moments in time like this one, when the wave is crashing against the rocks, sending a shower of water, salt, and sea foam into the air. I went with a really wide aperture for this shot to make sure the bird stood out among all that busy water, and it worked perfectly. But not all birds here are big and brave. Some of them are a little shy and, well, tired from migration, like this cute little purple sandpiper. This is my first time seeing one of these cute little birds as it stood among the soaking wet rocks. It wasn't long until it hunkered down behind them, giving us this amazing opportunity to get a really good look at this beauty. And look at that eye. Simply incredible. There's so much detail here that you can see tiny little feathers that almost look like eyelashes. Wow. Our little bird finally decided it was in need of a nap, so it tucked its beak under its feathers, balanced on one leg, and cautiously eyed its surroundings. Let's move inland and check out another bird who has developed an interesting way to survive. This is the loggerhead shrike, also known as the butcher bird. This little bird is often found in wide open spaces and it's never too far from sharp objects like this barbed wire fence. What a cutie, but there's a reason why this bird is called the butcher bird and there's a reason why it's always found so close to barbed wire fences. It likes to impale its food like this grasshopper on the barbed sections of wire where it then slowly but surely devours its prey one piece at a time. But in the right light, this little bird makes for an excellent image. The early morning light hitting the tall brown grass behind this bird makes for such a beautiful background. And then the orange light reflecting off of this bird's beak is simply incredible. And look at the shape of that beak. Just truly amazing. And who could miss that sunrise reflected in the bird's pitch black eye? But this bird wasn't the only hungry bird in the area. There was also this beautiful female red-shouldered hawk whose prized catch was a black racer. The first thing you might notice about this raptor, other than its amazing beauty, is the bird's left eye. I have photographed this bird in the past, and it looks to be some type of injury, but that injury hasn't prevented her from catching and feasting on snakes. If anything, her injured eye just shows us how resilient she is, and it adds a little mystery to the bird's background. All right, let's head to another spot not far away where another unique bird is ready for a photo shoot. This is a limpkin, an amazing wading bird that eats snails and freshwater mussels. And here it comes now with a nice fresh catch. Let's take a closer look. Whoa, you can even see some dirt floating in the water drop that's clinging to that mussel. Talk about microcosmos. What an amazing world we live in. And a little further up, we get such a detailed glimpse into this bird's face that you can see each individual water droplet in perfect clarity. And don't forget the beautiful glint in this bird's eyes, the sun and its reflection on the surface of the water, making for a nice double catch light. That's just incredible. And behind me in a tree, we have this beautiful little blue-gray gnat catcher. Again, such incredible detail here, especially when you consider this bird's size. It's only about three inches or 10 centimeters long. This is a little tiny bird. It's really hard to photograph these things. All right, let's head back to our feeding frenzy over in the salt marsh and see what we can find along the way. Ah, uh, yeah, my favorite bird enjoying the early morning hours in an old pine tree. These two shots were shot using the 600 F4 and the Sony 1.4 teleconverter, giving me an effective focal length of 840 millimeters. 
and it captures just an amazing amount of detail. Oh, and every shot in this video was shot handheld. I didn't use a tripod. Just simply stunning that you can handhold this 600 millimeter lens. And down below, we have this awesome tricolor heron who seems to be reflecting on the future. And right next door, we have this lovely little blue heron who's also busy reflecting on things. And who could pass up this water slinging reddish egret who's prone to sudden outbursts of dance and amazingly graceful wing displays that rival all other birds in the area. Yep, the reddish egret is quite the show off and I'll never miss the show even when it starts to wind down. I opened up the aperture in this shot to f4 and the bokeh is just so nice. Man, I really like everything about this shot. The light, the color, the clarity, the contrast, and the detail. The bird just pops right off the background. Amazing. All right, let's head back to that craziness and that little pocket of water way in the back. <laughs> there they are. What a spectacle of birds. It's like a, a feeding frenzy going on here. It's no really rhyme or reason to any of it. <laughs> but it's quite the show. <laughs> so what do you do when you're presented with something like this? Well... Of course, you sit back and enjoy the ongoing hilarity, but you also use the opportunity to get some amazing close-up portraits like this snow egret who seems a little surprised at all the action going on here. Look at those eyes all bugging out like that. But once it finds a nice place among the mangroves, we get a better look at its elegant beauty. Again, I went with a wide open aperture of F4 to get some good isolation between the bird and the busy background, and it worked like a charm. But stopping down to F8 didn't quite give me enough depth of field to capture this entire wood stork's wild looking head along with his beak. Had I stopped down a little more, maybe F10, I think I would have been able to have gotten the bird, its beak, and the minnow in perfect focus. But lesson learned, man, when you're this close with a 600 millimeter, you really got to pay close attention to the aperture. And talk about sticking your neck out for the shot. This great egret surely knows how to reach into the shot. What a beautiful bird. But the highlight for me were the beautiful roseate spoonbills who started flying in to join the party. This one lands and gives us an impressive look at its wild looking head. These birds will be breeding soon, so their colors right now are really off the charts. Back in the crowded pool and we get this really odd bird combo as a spoonbill and a white ibis collide. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, look at the spoonbill's neck. It's resting right on the ibis's tail. What a goofy bunch of birds. And now we get a close-up view of one of the spoonbills who is busy feeding. And again, that 600 F4 just soaks up the detail, delivering us an amazing glimpse into a world we don't always get a chance to see. And this final group of shots combines a couple of my favorite things. You've got this beautiful spoonbill here, and then you've got this nice array of water drops falling from its odd-shaped beak. Simply amazing to be able to see this much detail during these frozen moments in time. In this shot, the water drops look like tiny glass beads suspended in the air, and one more shot where the last water droplet clings to the bird's bill. And let's look at the detail in this bird's face. I mean, look at the color, the alternating dark and light colors on its bill, its bald, really odd yellowish head, and its amazing multicolored jewel of an eye. What a breathtaking masterpiece this bird is. And in this final shot, we get this beautiful profile, so full of color. And look at the little wisps of feathers towards the bottom of the bird's neck. That little bit of orange splashed on the base of the shoulders and those amazing red vertical stripes that look as if they were freshly painted on the bird's wing by a master painter. Simply unbelievable detail, color, and clarity. Wow. Everything about the Sony 600 millimeter F4 is absolutely incredible. It's lightweight. It, the detail that it captures is just mind-blowing i still can't get over how good this lens is and i'll have some more videos coming up soon that'll demonstrate how good this combo actually captures action because i think at this point in time the a7r4 with the 600 f4 is the best camera combination i've ever had the pleasure of using it's just again it's unbelievable did you have a favorite section or a favorite bird from this video let me know in the comments below if you like the video feel free to share it that's always helpful like and subscribe too and until next time, I'll see you later.